Welcome to Cheese In Depth. I'm Michael Landis, and I'm very, very pleased today to be able to bring you our final episode of the Bourbon Heritage Month. This is part four with Adam Harris, uh, the senior ambassador for Basil Hayden. And uh, we are joined by a very good friend of mine, an exceptional cheesemaker, David Gremmels, today. And we're going to be tasting this year's, the 2020, uh, the um, Rogue River Blue, along with a couple little special parts along the way as we go through here. And uh, I'm very, very excited. I'm going to turn it over to Adam, and he's going to start off, and then we're going to jump right into the pairing. So, Adam, if you'll be pleased to take over. Absolutely, Michael, my friend. It has been so much fun this whole month as we've been celebrating Bourbon Heritage Month here in September together. I have had the best time being able to share Basil Hayden's with you and with all of your viewers and friends. Uh, you know, we've, we've run quite the gamut over the last four weeks. We started off with our bourbon, uh, you know, our tried and true bourbon here, which is part of our small batch collection at our distillery in Claremont, where we've been making uh, small batch bourbon for well over 25 years. Really, it was our sixth generation master distiller, Booker No, who really innovated the small batch category of bourbon whiskey. And uh, we continue to innovate in the category as well and to rye too. And so as we've sort of gone on this journey together, we've experienced not just bourbon, but also some rye. We've experienced some cool finishes. Uh, I think David's got one today with our little port finish on the dark rye. And then today what I wanted to bring, since we are kind of at our, at our peak of this program, uh, I wanted to bring some really special whiskeys along. I have both a bourbon and a rye, and I have our 10-year-old bourbon and our 10-year-old rye. Uh, the 10-year-old bourbon is something that we did last year. We, it was so popular, we decided to repeat it. And then also our 10-year-old rye is a new uh, release that just came out this summer. So hopefully those of you that have been following along and sort of seeing what the lineup was going to be, maybe you've had a chance to find some of that rye on the shelf wherever you might be shopping, safely, of course. So um, just a little bit of review for everybody that maybe hasn't been tuning in, but, you know, as we're celebrating Bourbon Heritage Month here, it always helps to, to understand what bourbon is, you know, and so bourbon is an American-made product. We're celebrating it this month, as we should be celebrating it all year long. I certainly know I do. Uh, bourbon has to be made of no less than 51% corn. Bourbon has to be aged in a new unused charred oak barrel. Uh, bourbon can't be distilled any higher than 160 proof, put into a barrel any higher than 125 proof, and then put into a bottle any lower than 80 proof. And everything that we'll be trying tonight or this afternoon is uh, 80 proof, as Basil Hayden is known to be a very approachable bourbon. And that's exactly how we want it to be, whether it is a bourbon or a rye. And then last but not least, bourbon is a very genuine product, meaning that it's just water, wood, grain, yeast, thyme, and a little bit of love. And if you're putting all those ingredients together in the right way, you are making some fantastic bourbon or making some fantastic rye if you switch that grain component to no less than 51% rye. So all other standards of identity are going to stay the same. Sorry if that was a little bit of review for some of you, but uh, if you're just now tuning in, then maybe you just learned a little something. So uh, Basil Hayden, as I mentioned, 80 proof, approachable. Uh, not every bourbon needs to be a challenge. Not every bourbon needs to be big and bold. You know, I love some of those big, bold flavors myself, but every once in a while it's nice to refine back a little bit and have something uh, that really might be a little more playful, which is what Basil Hayden is. And one of the reasons why Michael and I have been having so much fun is because we're really enjoying opening up people's perceptions to what goes with bourbon. You know, we're certainly focusing on cheese, but as the holidays start to come around and maybe the cooler weather sets in and you're looking to have, uh, you know, select people over, uh, being able to have fun with the way you entertain is, um, you know, always a good idea. So being able to bring some really great fine Kentucky whiskeys, whether that's going to be one of our bourbons or rice with Basil Hayden, and then being able to see how well it pairs with cheese and how some bigger, bolder cheeses, like the one that we're going to try today, are going to stand up to that bourbon or rye. And then with 80 proof, the bourbon is really going to complement that. It's not going to overpower the cheese, but it's going to be enough of uh, alcohol there to really sort of cut through some of the cheese as well to where maybe you don't feel so weighted down after enjoying a little too much cheese or a little too much whiskey. So anyway, uh, what I want to bring to mind right here, uh, just for a little bit of visual inspiration as we get into the whiskey tasting here, I thought as we're uh, talking about this home entertaining, I wanted to show you some recent pictures we took of our fantastic spreads that we'll be serving throughout the holidays and as we entertain. Uh, on any given reason. You don't have to be just the holidays. I, I think Friday makes a perfectly good reason, or even Thursday afternoon makes a perfectly good reason. 
And then working our way through there for a little bit more visual inspiration. Again, we're featuring our Basil Hayden uh, traditional Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. I'd like to introduce you to a real fan favorite, which is our Basil Hayden 10 year old bourbon. As I mentioned last, uh, just a moment ago, we did release this around the holidays last year and it was so popular that I didn't even see a bottle of it. It came and went lickety split. And so with that popularity in mind, we are bringing it back uh, this season. And as you'll notice from what I'm holding here as to what you're seeing in the picture there, we put a black belt on the bottle this time. And I thought that this was a very fancy looking bottle when we did it last year. And the fact that it didn't have a black belt, it was kind of like wearing, um, you know, wearing a, uh, oh, heck, cheap shoes with a tuxedo, right? So I think having that black belt along with the black label really brings this bottle together. It's beautiful and lets you know that you're about to drink something pretty spectacular. So the tasting notes are as they is, as you guys know. Uh, I don't sit around telling you exactly what to taste. I like for you to follow your own uh, spirit and uh, choose your own adventure. But, you know, with bourbon, we're going to look for some of those vanilla and caramel notes. Um, as we all know, Basil Hayden is a high rye bourbon, which means that we do add a little bit of spice. I've used the term elegant spice quite a bit to describe that note that we get in Basil Hayden. Uh, 10 years old is quite a bit older than what you might know our traditional bourbon to be. So we have uh, you know, a handful of years of extra age on that whiskey. And as bourbon ages in a warehouse and those big 53 gallon barrels, what we'll start to see is a decrease in the oaky notes and we'll see an increase in the vanilla notes and we'll see an increase in a little bit of the char notes. And so at 10 years old, you're gonna have a really nice vanilla component to this bourbon as it's aged. Uh, the rye is going to start to go down a little bit too in that 10 year, um, that 10 year age and you're going to get a really nice balanced, full flavored but soft palated our soft textured bourbon. Um, the mouthfeel is just really fantastic here. And I think uh, someone just called me on accident. So uh, let's go ahead and as I like to do this three uh, part system for tasting, we always want to look in the glass first. 10 years old at 80 proof, we're going to have a nice uh, deep honey color here. Um, now as we nose it, there's gonna be some fantastic vanilla and caramels, as I mentioned. There's gonna be some brown sweets in here. And then I also get some fruit, kind of candied fruit almost, like a little bit of a fruitcake thing kind of happening. And then as we sip the whiskey, uh, we'll go ahead and give it that Kentucky Chew that we've been using these, uh, this month, and we'll see what we think about the flavor. I definitely get some of those baking notes. I get some of those candied fruit notes. Um, get a little bit of oak coming through and we have that nice, dry, medium body finish. Nice clean finish here too. Well, lingering a little bit as well. So maybe I'm reevaluating my own tasting notes as I'm tasting this again. Um, what I'd like to do now is uh, send this over to David who is going to lead us through a little bit of a, a tasting of the cheese and an introduction to Rogue River over there. And then we'll uh, talk about how to put these uh, whiskeys and cheeses together. So, David? Adam, thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited to be a part of this beer urban flight and rye flight. Uh, certainly one of my favorite browns um, in the world is drinking a, a fine glass of bourbon uh, every season of the year, as you've described. And there so, you know. Speaking of seasonality, this is um, really an exciting season for us at Rogue Creamery. Uh, it's the launch of Rogue River Blue, and you all are the first, really, to receive it. And the difficulty is, is as you may have heard, um, I, I live in Southern Oregon, and so our region was impacted by the Almeda fires, and so that really has shut down the region um, and shipping via UPS and FedEx. So um, the farm, the creamery, uh, and our dairy are safe. And most importantly, the team and the herd are safe. So um, sadly, four team members lost their uh, homes and uh, we're doing a fundraiser. So we'll follow up uh, with, uh, through Michael and, and give you a link to support our team our teams as they uh, start to 
rebuild their homes. So um, anyway, thank you for joining. Uh, as you may or may not know, uh, Rogue Creamery was established in 1933. It's 87 years old. Um, and uh, we are a B Corp. We're one of Oregon's first B Corps. And that is using business as a force of good, socially, um, economically, and environmentally, having a positive impact in all that we do. Um, we're a mission-driven company. Our mission is simple. It starts with people first, people dedicated to sustainability, service, and the art and tradition of creating the world's finest handmade cheese. And we do have that in our flight, I'm happy to share. So uh, we'll be tasting that at the end of our tasting here. But to start, uh